The question for our Q&A this week is, Gut doctor, I am experiencing some swallowing difficulties lately. What can I do about this? This is a question from one of our subscribers covering the important and common issue of swallowing difficulties. The medical term for this is dysphagia and I've reproduced their question word for word. Now this question is difficult to answer because we don't have a lot of information to go by. So what I can do is to come up with some general principles on how to answer this problem that hopefully will be of assistance. Broadly, we can divide swallowing disorders into two main groups based upon location of the problem. The location can either be in the oropharynx, which is the middle part of the pharynx or throat region, or the esophagus, which is the long muscular tube that goes from the bottom of the pharynx to the stomach. And remembering that dysphagia means difficulty in swallowing, we can have oropharyngeal dysphagia, where the symptoms arise from the dysfunctional transfer of a food bolus in the pharynx to the esophagus, or esophageal dysphagia, where the problem is localized to the esophagus. These two groups can be further subdivided into problems that affect function and therefore are inherently neuromuscular in origin, that is, nerves and muscles are affected, and problems that affect structure. These can be conditions that obstruct or are inflammatory. We can see this all illustrated in this table. Conditions such as stroke are neuromuscular causes of oropharyngeal dysphagia, whereas a more uncommon condition such as achalasia can be a neuromuscular cause of esophageal dysphagia. Conditions such as tumors of the mouth or throat could be a structural cause for oropharyngeal dysphagia, whilst an esophageal stricture or narrowing can be a structural cause of esophageal dysphagia. The classification of dysphagia therefore is really important to help narrow towards a diagnosis and it's imperative that we get an accurate diagnosis before considering treatment. Fortunately, a good patient history can help narrow the possibilities and we get to a working diagnosis 80 to 85% of the time. If the history of dysphagia is fairly sudden, as is suggested by our subscriber, that may suggest a more structural cause, whilst a progressive dysphagia is often in keeping with a neuromuscular cause. Swallowing difficulties to both solids and liquids increases the likelihood of a neuromuscular cause. If there is difficulty in initiating swallowing, this is suggestive of oropharyngeal dysphagia. Food that tends to stick after swallowing is often suggestive of esophageal dysphagia. Significant weight loss that accompanies dysphagia raises the possibility of something more sinister, such as a tumor, especially if there are relevant risk factors, such as a long-standing history of smoking. One should always inquire about pain associated with swallowing because it may indicate the presence of an inflammatory condition, such as esophagitis. To help facilitate the diagnosis, we carry out a physical examination, and that could involve looking carefully at the face for signs of weakness or voice changes that you might see in a neuromuscular cause, such as stroke, examining for masses in the neck, and direct observation of swallowing liquids and solids. Observation of swallowing is often carried out by a trained speech pathologist who can help evaluate for any oropharyngeal dysphagia, sometimes using adjunctive tests, such as a particular type of x-ray known as a modified barium swallow. Speech pathologists are able to prescribe foods with different consistency to people suffering from oropharyngeal dysphagia, and this can be very helpful. Investigations that can be carried out to look for an esophageal cause include a gastroscopy, which can look directly for structural causes, imaging studies, and a manometry study, which is able to measure esophageal pressures. So in summary, to answer the original question by our subscriber, what can be done about their swallowing problem? The key thing to emphasize is that we have to get to a diagnosis. And we can do that through a combination of good history taking, examination, and diagnostic tests. After that, we can look at a tailored treatment plan. And depending upon the particular diagnosis, this may involve a multidisciplinary team that could include primary care physicians, speech pathologists, neurologists, ear, nose and throat specialists, and gastroenterologists. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your questions and comments, so please post them below and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.